Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. I have a very special guest with me, Rena Shaw, who's the Director of Business Development at Binance US. Rena, it's really great to have you. Hey Tony, so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Let's start with your background. I'm very curious about your background, reading up on your LinkedIn profile and so forth. Uh, where are you from? You know, What did you do before Binance US and how did you end up at Binance US? Absolutely. Happy to answer that. So I'm currently based out of San Francisco. Used to live in LA prior to that, raised, or raised in Houston, kind of grew up all along the Gulf Coast, things like that. Um, my career is a little bit different. So I have an energy background, commo energy commodities background. I am a petroleum engineer, first and foremost, went to school for that. Worked in the oil industry for some years for an operator, Chevron. Um, pretty much if you ever watched the movie Deepwater Horizon, all the rigs on the Gulf, on oh, the yeah. Gulf things like that, that was my life. <laughs> um, very, very different. I kind of lived on a little bunk, was spent most of my days drilling for oil, slept wow. for a little bit and just rinsed and repeated all the time. Um, I then moved on to energy finance after the oil boom kind of took a standstill. With energy finance, I started evaluating how to invest in energy projects, green energy, new things. And that's actually where I first heard a little bit more about blockchain technology as a whole, as opposed to just crypto. And from after doing energy finance and private equity, I moved to management consulting with Kinship, a really small boutique advisory firm. And that's really where I worked a lot of different blockchain projects. One was a blockchain based energy grid. One was this mobile crypto investing app called Ember Fund, where you can invest like a crypto hedge fund as little as like a hundred, two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, it brought me to the role that I had before Binance, which is a small stablecoin startup of launching a stablecoin that offered a revenue share to partners. And then here I am with Binance. Very cool. I, I'm very curious about the oil rig. So you were actually on oil rigs in, in the ocean? Oh, yeah, I did rigs in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. I wow. did rigs on land for West Texas and California, about like four hours south of San Francisco and Bakersfield, which is like oil town, California. Um, yeah. And so like basically I would evaluate how to set up our drilling parameters or how the rig itself would drill on ocean floor or our ground just as a whole, as well as natural gas reservoirs. Very cool. And what was the first cryptocurrency that you heard about or came across? Was it Bitcoin? Was it something else? It was Bitcoin. And I'm like almost embarrassed to tell you how <laughs> I learned about Bitcoin. Um, it was 2012 and there was this TV show that I'm obsessed with, it's called <laughs> The Good Wife. It's one of those political attorney thrillers and there was the case where the protagonist was basically given this case on should she reveal who created Bitcoin because he was in a case against the US Treasury on Bitcoin and whether it's going to undermine the US dollar. And they had this really awesome video clip explaining what Bitcoin is and how it's peer to peer. You don't necessarily go through central governments to have this type of different currency system. And what got me the best part about it, they're like, it's Bitcoin, you can mine it like gold. And they had this like gif of someone using like one of those like old school, like mining like little things, like when <laughs> this is how you get Bitcoin. And I'm like, huh. <laughs> You need to know more, especially if it's something that you're going to mine with electricity, which is like what the users on the show, the teenage son on the show is doing. And I'm like, OK, if someone is going to do this electricity, me coming from an energy background, knowing that like 60 something percent of fossil fuels in America power electricity, I need to know what people are interested in this currency, especially if I'm going to be spending my days in the oil fields, working on producing something for, I don't know what it's being used for. So I had to learn more. Very cool. Um, on your Twitter profile, you have uh, a statement saying uh, you were previously in, uh, you're a drilling engineer turned crypto miner. So are you mining uh, Bitcoin or something else right now? Just curious about that. <laughs> Yeah, so I actually set up mining rigs quite some year ago and even a, a baby scale mining pool. I currently am mining. In the past, they used to mine a lot of Monero and Zcash. 
Right now, I'm very curious about grin mining. I just kind of set up my rigs to do that. I have mined Ethereum in the past, but now I'm just trying to see what other diversified assets can I try to mine and are they easy to mine? Um, what's different about my mining ops versus anybody else is that I am using 100% renewable energy uh, coming from oil. It's really hard for me to justify using traditional fossil fuels for <laughs> mining because I think power still needs to be distributed across the world where people don't have it. Sure, sure. Uh, so on that note, what are you holding your crypto portfolio? I'm assuming Bitcoin. You mentioned some Ethereum uh, looking into Grin. Anything else you can share on that front? I'm pretty into I'm pretty big in the staking coins. So I have some like Algo, some uh, what else am I staking? I think uh, Tezos, a couple others. But yeah, I'm all about creating more value from holding something. Very cool. So I want to segue into uh, some Binance questions because you guys have had some well, a lot of great updates, a lot of new features, and I almost find it hard to keep up sometimes. So I know folks are very <laughs> interested about it. The first is um, the Binance US widget, where it's like a website widget that you can place on your site and folks can kind of start the crypto trading process from there. Can you give an overview of it? I don't know if I summarized it well there actually pretty good summary. So basically it's like an embeddable widget, like a plug and play tool where users can put this on their website and then earn rewards for anyone who onboards with us and trades with us. And it's like a really nice way for users to have a way to own the experience of getting your friends, your family, whomever, even if it's an institutional player into crypto. And it's a very elegant, streamlined solution. It's very similar to the Buy Crypto button on Binance US's website. It's a couple clicks and you're there. Very cool. So you can essentially start the process and then it'll lead you over to Binance.us, right? Absolutely. And for all the people coming through on your link, you will earn a referral, a referral reward for it. Um, and I don't know if you can uh, speak to this because maybe it gets a bit uh, technical, but is it embeddable on almost any website? So if you have a website, you just got to grab the code and put it on, regardless of the platform? Exactly. Oh. As easy as we possibly can. It's just some lines of code that you will embed directly into any web application and you're ready to go. It's uh, our way of bringing crypto to everybody. <laughs> Very cool. Well, I have to put that on my website. I have yet to do that, so I'll certainly try that out. But I, that, that's a cool feature. I like it. Yeah, I'll take that to you. <laughs> awesome. The next item uh, was the launch of a the Binance OTC trading portal, so over the counter trading. Um, I was curious if you can talk a bit about this and and why you've added that service, and is it just for institutional investors? What what are the thresholds? Things along those lines. Yeah, happy to answer about this. So the OTC portal just launched about maybe a month, a month ago. I think it launched just like the week before I got there. And what it is, is a really simple portal to do over the counter trades, $10,000 or higher, all with one seamless transaction, very uh, institutional focus so that you can trade large quantities in a single trade without with saving time by going through that one clearing at that one trade and basically what's special is that it's all done privately and so you're not necessarily messing with our normal order books um, anybody can actually facilitate that with this you don't have to be a retail you don't have to be an institutional investor, only, uh, institutional client only. You can come from retail. We just will need to go through the corporate onboarding process with you. What's also great is that when you're doing that process, there is a dedicated person, basically my counterpart, who will be there with you every step of the way to help you set up the APIs and anything you need. Very cool. Now, uh, is it just for uh, corporates or could I, as a regular person who maybe has that uh, amount of money or cash, maybe I have 50000 I want to go buy Ethereum directly over the counter. Can I come to you guys and say, hey, I got 50 k set me up? Yes, as long as you're willing to go through our verification status and go through all the steps, we got you. Okay. Perfect. Um, and you mentioned that, you know, obviously OTC and it's very common knowledge that, you know, this is not recorded on the order books and, and possibly the data that's sent to 
aggregators like coin market cap which i know you guys acquired and all of that um so otc are you guys seeing a lot of demand on your end um obviously you may not be able to talk a lot about that it is, is some proprietary information but curious the demand you guys are seeing and and uh are there a lot of people buying otc uh, a lot of folks are curious about that because they know those things could impact the price if they were public Great question. I am seeing a little bit more demand coming through month over month. A lot of people are really just using our OTC portal because they need access to liquidity. And I have to say, Binance US is committed to keeping the lowest fees in all of the ecosystem in America. And so more and more people are opting in to want to come through with us. Very cool. I, I'm, I'm sure many folks are going to be excited to hear about that because there's talks of more institutional investors getting in the market. So it's great to hear that demand is is on the rise on your end. The Brave Browser Partnership, where uh, there's now a widget similar to the website widget in the Brave Browser that you can start crypto trading from there. Is that correct? You are absolutely correct. It's a really cool widget. It's a very clean and very simple UI UX where when you open the Brave browser on the right side, you'll see a little, you'll see your BAT holdings and what you're earning and then you'll see a Binance little widget and you can buy crypto immediately from there. Um, you can buy whether you are in America using the .us side, the partnership also extends the .com side. So if you're a global Brave user, you can buy crypto from Binance.com. and. Then, I really like this project because it's um, we're sharing best practices with the Brave user base, which is a very strong community, a warm and friendly one. And what I love even more about it is Brave is so privacy focused and things of that nature. And privacy is extremely important for going forward in the digital age. So I felt like, like this is something that's really lovely in the space. Yeah, I, I mean, the adoption of Brave has increased significantly. I, I use it. I know a lot of people have been using it. and. Um, I personally very much believe in the project and the basic attention token because I'm in the digital marketing space. So it's disrupting the whole Google advertiser publisher model, uh, which is very dominant in, in the market. So a big believer in that and uh, really cool that you guys are partnering with them and, you can, and folks can get more exposure to crypto trading and start that process. That's it's very cool. I feel the same way. <laughs> Um, so there's a common question that gets asked all the time. And I tell people, hey, um, you know, this is not dependent on Binance US. It's the regulators in each state. So folks are curious, hey, when New York? And I said, hey, maybe you got to talk to the, the bit license people, <laughs> right? Uh, they're curious about North Carolina and Florida and all that. Any updates as far as, you know, maybe any new states you guys may be on the cusp of getting approval for and maybe opening up in? We are trying our hardest to be available in every every state in America, all 50 in Puerto Rico, day in, day night, day in and day out. Our legal team is working extremely hard with all the appropriate regulatory bodies per state because each state has a different set of what licenses you need regarding MTL, so New York in particular, the bit license, and we are getting there. I think right now we cover about 74% of America, but I hear you, I'm <laughs> originally from Texas. My parents can't buy on Binance US and I have siblings in New York, so we definitely know it's a priority and are committed and will not stop until we get there. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I think, uh... Sometimes the ex you guys get the brunt of it when it's more of like the regulators in each of these states, right? Um, they're not all, all states are not on the same page. So um, we'll, we just got to be patient and, and, you know, hopefully they get things going faster for you guys. Um, I think part of like building a secure, safe, extremely compliant rate, uh, exchange is that we do take all the steps one by one and make sure that we are doing everything possible and doing it in the correct manner. We don't want to rush through any of these either. We want to make sure the day we're open for business, we're there to stay. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think uh, that's the right way to approach it because like you said, you want to be there to stay. And um, But if you try to get ahead of it and circumvent these, these uh, regulators, it's not going to put you in a good position. So right. um, 
Cool. So I did want to ask, you know, are there any cool things you guys are working on right now? Um, anything we can expect later this year that you can potentially share? I know there's probably things that you can't disclose at this moment, but any hints you can give? Absolutely. If you looked, I think yesterday or even today, Reoccurring Buys just launched on both mobile and our website. So basically now you can set up buys weekly, uh, twice a month, monthly, to about 20 different currencies, all still at the lowest fees in America, what we're committed to. And what I really like about this in particular, I actually set one up, I think this morning, is that for someone like me who kind of uses the dollar cost average method to buy crypto, it's a great way to get small, take small positions into crypto assets that you are really wanting to support and then build your portfolio over time. That's personally how I've always is to my crypto investing and I like this approach. I think it's a, a very good way for people to like take some steps into crypto, think about it, but also take the time to understand the finances behind it and get themselves up to speed on like the education. Got it. I, I love the reoccurring buys feature. That's pretty cool. Um, and I'll definitely be leveraging that because I do leverage Binance uh, .us to, to make my crypto purchases. I've, I'm have i not going to name the other exchange I'm very angry at right now. But uh, yes, I've been using Binance. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely something we're very proud of this particular one. I think 20 currencies were on the recurring buy. The platform itself is going through some changes right now. We have 68 trading pairs. We did some site maintenance in May, basically, that now allows us to support, I think, 1.4 million orders per second. We wow. know uptime is a deal for our bigger traders and want to make sure that we are on top of that. We, I think a security score came out today for, regarding Binance US of us being extremely secure, I think through Sir.live. So very proud about that. And we're just doing a lot of building right now, making sure that everything our users, customers want, that we are there to provide it. Um, fun fact is that in my few weeks of joining the team, I actually start off with customer support tickets and still am working on them. So every time a user gives us feedback, I actually see it, I hear it, I am taking it to the appropriate team. So when you are asking, hey, list this coin, it's not getting ignored at all. It's like, okay, I know this is an asset you want. We're going to put it through our digital asset regulatory framework and see, can we support it? How we can support it? Things like that. Uh, customers are always giving us feedback for, um, I guess, features they want, but also partnerships that they would love to see. And me leading on BD, it's important for me to know what they want so that I structure partners to work for them. That's awesome to hear, and I'm glad you guys are, you know, paying attention to the community and, you know, folks have their feedback, they have their requests, and you guys are open-minded and listening. And, uh, you know, you mentioned security and uptime; those are just so critical, I think, uh, for the maturation of the market. So it's great to hear that's a high priority for you guys. Thank you, and customers, if you're out there, if you have more feedback, keep it coming. Leave us a ticket in our CSQ; we'll be there. 100 steps of the way. Not even just me, but Kali herself is known to be responding to these tickets too. Uh, it's hard to it's hard to imagine another organization where a CEO is personally taking these. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah, I, I'm in it's total agreement. I've interviewed Catherine a few times, and she's on Twitter. She's active. She's responding. She's talking to people. She's not hiding. So I, I like that. Um, that that's great. Um, so. My final question here, and uh, it's it's the reason why I want to ask you this is because you come from a different industry, you know, the the, the drilling and so forth, and and dealing with oil, and now you're in crypto, and I'm mm -hmm. curious where you see the crypto market in two to three years, given that you've been in a mature industry of oil and and drilling and so forth. Um, you know, what's your outlook? And I I think I value your perspective a lot because once again, you were you didn't just uh, come, you know into crypto and maybe you were doing something else before, but a very different industry. And, and I'm curious, the contrast and, you know, what's your outlook? I'm, I'm extremely bullish about crypto, very hopeful and optimistic that 
in a few years, more and more people will know about crypto. They will have heard about it. There are conversations around a dinner table around about it with families talking about crypto and a different financial system with their children and such like that. I do wonder where it will be in three years in the sense, will we get the adoption that we need to propel ourselves forward? I, I don't know. I think I would need a crystal ball for something <laughs> like that. But for someone who has come from an industry that basically took the largest hit known to man in her early career yeah. energy and then have to bounce back for that, crypto is it's fantastic. It is just getting started. If you were to ask me what I bet on crypto, this Texas girl is going all in. <laughs> that is awesome. Rena, thank you so much for joining us today. I uh, learned a lot and uh, would love to have you back on in the future. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. It was really fun. Yeah.